three cylinders, three exhaust tips, 300 horsepower, and 30 PSI boost from this 2023 Toyota GR Corolla. Lots of threes in this car. Am I done yet? Can I go drive it? Can I go drive it? Can I go drive it? No, screw the script. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's do a quick launch control. Give it a little gas and this thing launches so nicely. This is crazy for a three cylinder car, how fast this thing launches. This does zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds and it's all powered by a 1.6 liter three cylinder engine that's turbocharged. Nice hairpin going on here. This just eats these corners. Very sharp, but lots of grip from this car and it's a little bit wet outside as well. You get 300 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. It's the exact same motor basically from the GR Yaris, but because there's more space to work with, they were able to put in additional improvements, which gave it more power. There's a bigger oil cooler, there's more cooling everywhere actually compared to the Yaris. And that little turbo in this three cylinder pushes 30 PSI of boost. The weight distribution of this car is 58% in the front and 42% in the rear, and it weighs 3,253 pounds. We do have three different trim options for the GR Corolla, the Core model, the Circuit, and the Marizzo. Um, the Circuit Edition we are in right now, it does get a carbon composite roof, different leather trimming than you get in the Core, and a few like fake vents that you get. No real mechanical difference, unless you live in the United States, where the core is able to be spec'd without a limited slip differential uh, unless you get the performance package but in Canada the core and the circuit are identical mechanically at least. The Marizo version is super rare um, that car does get mechanical differences that make it more uh, track enabled but that car is just so rare you're probably never gonna get your hands on one even if you wanted as if this wasn't already hard enough to get your hands on. There's a lot of clutch um, the length of the clutch is quite long, but I like it, it's really good. The engagement point's perfect, very easy to drive. The shifter is also really good. Short gears, kind of, not as short as the Type R, but it's precise, it's engaging, it's really easy to just roll through gears. Yeah, the shifter's perfect, the clutch is perfect. It's a very old school interior in here, really not much going on. You even have a mechanical handbrake which it's kind of rare now you get a fairly high seating position um it doesn't really go as low as i'd like it to go but i really have no complaints about it it's supportive um it's bolstered nicely and you because it makes it sit higher you see pretty much everything on the road they also deleted the armrest from the regular corolla so you don't really hit anything when you're shifting gears i love the fact that there's a physical active rev match uh button that you can um, enable or disable instead of going through menus like in a lot of cars. Cough, cough, Honda. There's a drive mode controller. You do get an eco mode, a normal mode, a sport mode, and a custom mode, which you can configure. Let's see what you can configure. Um, we have powertrain, steering, and air conditioning. Can't change it unless you're stopped though. But let's put it back in sport. Um, you also do get this controller here where you can adjust the amount of torque being sent to the front or the back. You can send 60-40, or if you're in track mode, it does 50-50, or if you're in uh, rear-wheel bias mode, it's 30 and 70. That doesn't mean 70% of the power goes to the back all the time. It means up to 70% of the power can go to the back. Because Toyota engineers still wanted this to feel like a front-wheel drive car, um, when you do enter a corner, you will notice that the car will be sending power to the front wheels first, basically pulling you around the corner and 
upon corner exit, it will start sending powers to the rear wheels. So you get that all wheel drive benefit of extra corner stability. This doesn't get any adaptive dampers like they do in the Type R, but I don't mind the setup at all. It's perfect the way it is. I really have no complaints about it. It's rigid enough for you to have fun and also so pretty much livable and dailyable. No complaints there. You do get a front and rear torque and limited set differential. You can get, the, like I said, you can get the core without it in America, but I highly, highly recommend that you do. I don't see why you would get a GR Corolla without getting an LSD. They also changed quite a few things from the regular Corolla, like the subframe is much lighter, five kilos lighter to be precise. Pretty much complete different suspension architecture, the bushings are different, everything, the sway bar is different, the bushings are different. Uh, you do get two piece rotors up front with a uh, four piston mono block caliper and this car stops rather quickly. It's a little wet, but it's a really good job. Uh, the GR4 all wheel drive system is still a front wheel drive platform. It does have a drive shaft that sends power to the back when needed, um, especially using a wet multi-plate clutch. It's all software based and it just pulls power from the front and sends it to the back, but it can't do it for extended periods of time, especially when you're in like um, rear wheel drive bias mode because there's really no cooling for that diff in the back. This sounds amazing though. You don't get any fake pumped in audio and it sounds perfect the way it is. It's quick, nimble, it's wet, and there's just a ton of grip. In the real world, it's amazing. The turn in performance isn't as good as the Type R, it's close, but it's just not as dialed in. But that all wheel drive grip just pulls you out and it makes it feel much more fun. It might not set as fast of a lap time, but this is more entertaining to drive, especially because you don't get as much low end torque out in three cylinder, obviously one less cylinder. So like if I send it right now in fourth gear, nothing really happens in the Type R, you will get some speed out of it. So in this car, you'll have to get into, let's say, second gear and wind out all the way to 7,000 RPM. And this is where you're gonna get the most torque, which makes it really entertaining to drive. You kind of have to work for that torque. This also does a combined fuel economy of 24 miles per gallon, which is not bad at all, especially for this little pocket rocket car. You do get Toyota Safety Sense, which has forward collision warning, uh, lane departure warning, blast monitors, rear cross traffic alert. You get road sign assistance, which even displays like the construction signs or the deer signs in the dashboard. You do get adaptive cruise control. Um, no low speed follow, obviously, because it is a manual, but it works really well with the uh, Toyota lane tracing. Coming around this corner, second gear. Oh my God, the amount of Gs that you can push in this car. Incredible. I love how small it is too. Just so much confidence driving this car. And this dashboard is freaking beautiful. It's completely digital. You get two different views to choose from. I like it with the uh, RPM gauge up top. You do get your uh, boost gauge in here, your G-force meter. Um, your all-wheel drive torque distribution and a few other things and it looks awesome. The GR Corolla has the same wheelbase as a regular Corolla, which is actually longer than any other GR vehicle, including the Supra, the GR86, and the Yaris. It's also much wider than a regular Corolla hatch with very pronounced fenders in the front and rear that actually don't look tacked on at all, which also allows for wider tires for additional grip. You get 18 by 8.5 inch wheels wrapped with Michelin Pilot Sport PS4S tires. There are 235 40 R18s, which is actually quite wide for how small the car is. The air ducts all around the vehicle including the front and the sides are all functional. You do get a spoiler and carbon composite roof on the circuit edition. Three exhaust tips and LED lights throughout are standard on every model. It is a great looking car in my opinion. This color is called heavy metal gray and it's just perfect for the car. It's kind of cute looking, but also very aggressive. Inside, it's obvious that it's a Corolla. The GR model, however, did pick up some cool additions. You get a proper mechanical handbrake, which you wouldn't get in a Type R or the Golf R. 
the materials remain pretty much the same except the circuit edition you do get some added red elements and instead of the fabric seats you get suede and leather combo of course there is plenty of features that make the gr quite livable as well two usb-c ports a wireless charger apple carplay and android auto on the eight inch infotainment touch screen you get heated seats and a heated steering wheel and of course the digital dashboard with no center console though there isn't really much storage going on inside but it still feels fairly roomy in here for a car this small it's actually still rather comfortable for someone probably way over six foot tall unlike the supra which can feel a little bit cramped the rear seats however aren't exactly as roomy and for someone like me at 5'8 you can fit back here pretty well and it's good for family duties and a car seat but it's not nearly as comfortable for adults like the Type R or the Golf R. In the trunk you've got 17.8 cubic feet of cargo space which is a lot less than some competitors like the Golf R and the Type R again with 24.5 cubic feet in the Honda. The interior is simple, it's relatively basic and in a world where everything is very digitized I appreciate how down to earth the Corolla feels. I love the manual handbrake, I love how there's a physical button for the rev match controller, it's very easy to use and I appreciate the basic stuffs with the right amount of tech and modernization to feel up to date. With that being said, the GR Corolla is rather simple, especially when you put it up against some of the competitors with more tech like fancy adaptive suspensions and all the gadgets the car have. It's definitely not just a regular Corolla with a peppier engine either, and it's definitely way more interesting to drive than a Golf R. Some competitors cough cough Volkswagen focus a little bit too much on features like a fancy slider touch capacitive climate control button. Instead, the GR Corolla retains most of the tech but focuses more so on the basic fundamentals that makes it so fun and engaging where it really delivers in categories that matter most for a hot hatch. It's exciting to see Toyota finally having a seat at the table in the segment. That's all guys, thanks for watching.